Imagining Singapore in the year 2030 and beyond. Views on the country's future are being sought through a new web-based app by the Institute of Policy Studies, otherwise known as IPS, Quest 2030, modeled after video games like Sims, lets people create Singapore's future based on their choices. IPS will present the views gathered to policymakers and business leaders. Now, people will be asked questions on key trends. For example, if the country should focus more on economic growth or quality of life, or just how important is working with other countries to tackle climate change, the web page is online till the end of August, and IPS hopes to get around 20,000 people playing by then. The findings will be made public by October. We'd like to share with them what are some trends that can shape that future, but we'd like to hear what they think those trends might actually uh, turn out to be. It's not about what they hope it would be, but what they feel is likely to shape up by the time we get to 2030. We want to then generate conversations about policy recommendations that will take Singapore through and across all those plausible outcomes. Well, for more on how we can reimagine our future, we speak to IPS Deputy Director for Research, Dr. Gillian Koh. Dr. Koh, we just heard you there talking about how trends can help us reimagine the future. Now, when you set up something like that in your mind, you must be ex expecting to hear certain kinds of responses. What trends do you anticipate will be picked that will become noteworthy? Well, thanks, and it's lovely to see you again. Uh, well, there are actually 14 trends that we take people through. So they don't actually, uh, you know, get to pick which trend they think is top, but we invite our participants to respond to what they think will happen on all 14 trends if they have the time. Uh, I think what is key to us is to understand uh, responses on three key trends. First, whether Singaporeans think the level of inequality is likely to shrink or to grow in Singapore. Second, whether they think that Singaporeans are likely to become uh, more active in shaping their future or less. Uh, have, do they, will they have a sense of agency in doing that? And third, and this is quite important because, you know, we are in a setting where there's great uncertainty in the region and globe in terms of geopolitics, economics. The third one, we'd really like to hear them uh, uh, talk about or indicate their sort of sense of is whether there's likely to go, uh, to be more regional conflict or more regional cooperation. Very key for the issue of how we handle climate change, because as we know, the ecological landscape isn't just what Singapore does, but what the region does. Oh, Dr. Ko, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You Did you say 14 trends? You did. Or did I miss here? Yes, that? there yeah, are altogether okay. 14 trends. So 14 yes, there trends. There are altogether 14 trends on and this that, app. Yeah, eight but scenarios. They will take, uh, be taken through the first three. Oh, okay. Uh, then there yes. are eight scenarios so and what characters. Happens... And sorry, uh, for, in cutting, eight scenarios, characters, and professions, and these 14 trends, how do they interact with, with each other? Well, basically, how it starts out is that our participants will actually uh, give a sense of how they think those 14 trends will play out. And then, based on an interaction of their responses, uh, the system will actually uh, provide them with a picture of Singapore in 2030. That's what we called uh, a world of Singapore 2030, of which there are eight. And to flesh out what this really means to anyone, we actually have uh, you know, seven different characters in this uh, online experience too. And when you end up creating a certain world, you can also read about how these eight characters' lives are shaped by your choices. Uh, if you were to play this with a friend, let's say, and your friend ends up uh, selecting uh, different answers to those trends and therefore is brought to a different world or created a different world, then when he or she looks at the lives of those seven personas, it'll be quite different from uh, how the lives played out in your world, see? So basically, it starts with trends, 
the interaction of those trends gives you a picture of what Singapore will be like. To flesh that out, you'll get a sense of how seven different types of people will uh, actually be impacted by the choices you've made. All right, and I, I, I take it based on this data that you gather, policymakers can then use this to come up with the right kinds of policies to either go along with what people want or maybe try to shape the way they think so that they don't actually pick these trends. How will these apps actually help policymakers? Any examples from you? Well, the idea is basically to see what are the top choices or the top worlds that are selected through this process of the Singaporean public responding on this online experience tool. Basically, what will happen is that we will then share this with experts, with policymakers, with other think tankers, and we'll look at how we could recommend strategies, be it policy, be it social programs, be it action plans and pilot studies, to uh, try and see if we can make sure that some of these uh, trends are managed in a way that uh, uh, takes us to a point where by the time we get to 2030, we're in a position that is more resilient, that's ready to adapt to some of those changes, and that we are not then uh, falling into certain traps or risks. Uh, and on the other hand, we are also taking advantage of certain opportunities that come about. In other words, when policymakers and business leaders have this input, then they are able to make sure that they, uh, you know, uh, take advantage of the upsides of those plausible outcomes and try and downplay or mitigate the downsides of the range of plausible outcomes so that uh, you know we don't actually get there in the end. We actually get to a better place, a more resilient place, sustainable Singapore and inclusive Singapore. Oh, thank you for that, Dr. Julian Ko, Deputy Director for Research at the Institute of Policy Studies.